Hello, welcome back to Underrated Movies. I'm your guy, and I'm your man, Mr. Alton Henry. And yeah, my background's changed again. I, I just didn't feel like doing it in the room. Uh, I'm making my food right now. Today, I'm going to talk to you of another underrated film that I had the pleasure of watching. And actually, honestly, I watched it about a, almost a month ago. And uh, it was actually a film I've been wanting to watch for a while, ever since. I heard that this particular actor was interested behind the camera. I actually like that actors, uh, they'll go out and try to make a film, and it actually turns out pretty well. You have John Krasinski with the uh, Quiet Place franchise. You had, um, you have another actor I can't think of right now. Oh, Bradley Cooper with um, A Star is Born. That was a really good remake. And so on. And... I think this one is probably one of the most underrated of an actor. Besides Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele's become awesome. He's not under. He's pretty awesome. But an actor who's uh, decided to take a chance behind the camera and actually made a pretty good horror film. This is The Rental, directed by Dave Franco, starring Dan Stevens, uh, Allison Brie, and... Um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name who who's currently starring in the show called The Bear that's on FX. It's a story about two couples that decide to um, take a vacation at a little um, little uh, get together house, and turns out that there's a stalker that's knocking them out one by one. But what's really unique about this? Separate it from any other slasher like horror film, and I'm gonna tell you right now, the slasher scenes are pretty much limited. There's hardly any blood. Is that the film mostly dives into a drama, just a dark drama about friends who you think they are friends of each other, are actually deceiving one another from for personal. For personal for personal uses or selfishness, actually, I'll just say that uh, for selfishness. And it's actually interesting where these two. These two couples, as the movie kind of plays along, as you kind of think like, OK, they're trying to just do a little get together or something is kind of a mess where they start kind of giving out a few odd scenarios of what's currently happening surrounding the house, thinking that there is a perpetrator or somebody spying on the couples well then it gets a little bit more than that and it's actually interesting that what this our uh, antagonist does is that he is able to manipulate and psychologically pinch these couples to, uh, against one another actually all four of them against one another and you kind of see them slowly descend into in the chaos and madness that uh, the uh, the uh, killer starts taking them out one by one, and that was actually interesting. That's 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 like that's like if Home Alone was a horror film, and that's very that's a unique concept. I've I've never really seen a horror film, well actually no scratch that, but a slasher film that that took it from that angle and psychologically. Pits the uh, protagonist characters against one another, and then you slowly have the antagonist take them out one by one. I'm not going to say how. I'm not going to really dive in deep into how that takes place. I encourage you to watch the movie. But what I really, and actually, in, in the way that the movie kind of goes, it 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 takes in a in a in a direction where. It doesn't feel predictable at all. And when you kind of get to the point where you, and this is kind of a spoiler a little bit, where this killer is wearing like this old man-like mask. I love what Jan what Dave Franco decides to do with this. Where it kind of gives you somewhat of a reveal of what the killer looks like. Not really. Um, you never see the killer's face. 
but you can tell he's just a regular guy. And what I like how James Franco did it is that he centers the camera behind the killer. He takes his mask off and he looks around and he takes out um, cameras, spy cameras that he's established all over the house. And he pretty much cleans up the scene. I don't spoil it. Um, and then he kind of goes, picks up a pick, picks out another victim and does the whole thing over, uh, over again. And that was actually fascinating. And it felt like a very realistic and a realistic kind of horror film. Cause that actually feels, you know, it feels real. And given in this day and age of technology and everything, you don't know who's really watching you. It could be a friend or it could be some random stranger. You don't even know living your life. And then you have some random person just watching you. Planning on doing some evil ass act to do whatever they want to do. And that's scary. And the credits shows him. Um, I know I'm not going to spoil the rest of the ending, but I'm going to tell you that's what I that, that's what the ending reveals, and it goes in a way where I don't expect, and it's so bleak, and I and I loved it. That, that's 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 a best example for a horror film for a psychological horror film, well, slasher, that you hardly ever see, and you feel this dread just from watching the credits and just from how the film ends. You just feel. That level of dread and paranoia, which I, I, rarely do I ever get that in a horror film. This film here, it's a must check out. It's currently available. I think it might be still on Netflix. That's where I watched this film from. Lorento, have you seen it? Comment below. Let me know if you have and let me know what is your favorite underrated movie.